I'm going to give you guys a story. Actually, do I have time? I have time to tell the story, inshallah. I'll give you guys the story. Imam al Jawzi, rahimahullah, he wrote a book about Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, rahimahullah, Manaqib Ahmad, the, the virtues of Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah ta'ala. Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah, at the time of, at, at, at the peak of his life, before the fitna started, even after the fitna started, was the most famous man in the Muslim Ummah. Hands down. The fact that Imam al Dhahbi, rahimahullah, says this was the largest janazah that took place. In a matter of one day, he died and he was buried in the same day. You had 1.3 million people come and pray janazah on him. That's more than the Pope. More than Pope John Paul with all the, all the media and holding his body out. Imagine how popular and beloved he was. Imam Ahmad rahimahullah used to go around to his students' halaqahs, used to go around seeking knowledge from other people, wrapping his face so people wouldn't notice him. Very humble person because he didn't want people to put him on a pedestal. One day he was traveling to a sham, to Syria. What's, what we would call Syria today, but of course it's Syria, Palestine, Lebanon, and Jordan. A sham. And he tells the story, and of course back then, you know, you don't, Imam Ahmed rahimahullah didn't have a Facebook page. <laughs> he didn't know how he looked. He walks into a masjid to spend the night. And the hadith, the guard of the masjid, tells him, get out. Masjid's closing. He said, but I have nowhere to go. I don't know where to go. He said, get out. Ukhruj. Get out. Masjid's closing. He didn't sit there and say, by the way, I'm Imam Ahmed. No, he didn't play that card. Just get out. So Imam Ahmed rahimahullah, he picked up his stuff and he slept on the steps of the masjid. The Hadith came and started, hey, move. Go, you can't even sleep here. Go, move away. Imam Ahmed like, where am I going to go? I don't know anything. This man, not knowing who he's messing with, picks up Imam Ahmed rahimahullah by his legs and he drags him to the middle of the street and drops him. Imam Ahmed rahimahullah is like, okay. Then what happens? A baker who owns a bakery right across the street, he comes to Imam Ahmed, he says, you can come sleep in my bakery. Tonight I'm going to be doing some work, you can come sleep here. So he opens the way for him. Imam Ahmed rahimahullah observes this man. He's sitting there and he's, you know, putting the dough together and he's putting in the oven. And everything that he does while he's kneading the dough, he's going, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Subhanallah. The entire night, he's making tasbih. Imam Ahmed is shocked. Usually people get tired of tasbih after two minutes, three minutes. Shocked. This guy's constantly making tasbih at his workplace. He's not sitting in that, just at his workplace. He has nothing better to do, right? Back then, they didn't have little Wayne or Umm Kulthum. You know, or, or Junaid Jamshad pre what we know he is now, right? He didn't have his iPod or anything. SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allah Akbar. Constantly. Imam Ahmed rahimahullah goes, How long have you been in this situation? He says, What situation? Making tasbih to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, My whole life, this is what I do. Imam Ahmed rahimahullah, he says, what have you seen from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a result of all this tasbih that you make? All these days that you make tasbih, obviously Jannah. And imagine Rasulullah tells us each one of these is planting trees and mansions in Jannah. You can imagine what this man has with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Talk about change, right? But he says, مَا دَعُوتُ اللَّهَ لِشَيْءٍ إِلَّا أَعْطَانِي إِيَّا I never made dua to Allah for anything except that he answered it. Imam Ahmed rahimahullah said, Subhanallah, ma da'awtu Allah li shay illa a'taka iya. You never made dua to Allah except He gave it to you? He repeated, I never made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for anything except that He gave it to me. He said, except for one thing. Imam Ahmed rahimahullah said, what is that? He said, an ara al-imam Ahmed. <laughs> to have a chance to see Imam Ahmed. Imam Ahmed rahimahullah was brought to tears. He embraced this man. But then he said, Subhanallah, Ha huwa Allah, Qad ja'aka bi Ahmad, Ya jurruhu bi rijlihi ila makhbazik. He said, Here is Allah. He brought you Ahmad, dragging him by his feet to your bakery. If it wasn't for you, I could have slept in peace at the masjid. Subhanallah, think about that. Tasbih. He made use of his time. How much time do you kill at, the, at a red light going to work? How much time do you kill in front of the TV? How much time do you waste of your life that you could be planting trees and palaces in Jannah? That's changed. Keep it simple, Sunnah. Have, 
have a wird, have a wird, not one of these wirds that's made up by some shaykh somewhere that you're going to be doing. No, go to the sunnah of the Messenger وسلم, and that's sufficient. Find the things that he used to do on a daily basis, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and incorporate that in your life.